The Romanian mathematical magazine is famous for presenting awesome integrals, and this here is one of them. And the structure here reminds me of one of my favorite substitutions, the Weierstrass substitution, which is pretty useful if you have terms like 1 plus x, 1 minus x, or related terms like 1 plus or minus x squared, etc, etc. And the limits of integration here are 0 and 1, so all of these uh, all of these conditions are pretty well suited to apply the Weierstrass substitution. Now before we apply the substitution, some simplification is in order. So first up, I'm going to call this integral i here for reference purposes. And I'm going to expand using this term here, this 1 plus x term. So I have the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by the cube root of 1 plus x. This is a square, right? So I'm going to write it as 1 plus x cubed divided by 1 plus x times 1 minus x. And 1 plus x cubed in a cube root just gives you 1 plus x, right? So you have the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by 1 plus x times the cube root of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. And now for the Weierstrass substitution. We're going to let this term here, this 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x term, we're going to let it equal to t. And the cool thing about the substitution is the structure here. And by structure, I mean the function f of z, if you define it as 1 minus z divided by 1 plus z, this is its own inverse, meaning that f equals f inverse. And this is awesome. Why is that so? Because if you have a function that's its own inverse, you can switch up the variables while retaining structure. What that means is the rule by which we define t in terms of x is the same way we can define x in terms of t. And this is really useful when not only plugging in the various terms involved in the new t world, but also particularly useful when figuring stuff out like the differential element. And of course, if you have a mixture of weird structures like 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x and throw in terms that are nicer like x, then it's very easy to toggle between the x world and the t world. And in this case, um, evaluating or um, taking the differential element from the x world to the t world is really easy. So because of our substitution, it implies that dx equals 1 plus t times, uh, sorry about that, it's 1 plus t times negative 1 uh, minus 1 minus t times a positive 1 divided by 1 plus t squared dt. Okay, cool. So on simplification, you have a negative uh, 1 minus t minus 1 plus t, so they cancel out nicely, and you're left with a negative 2 term, dt, divided by 1 plus t squared. And my handwriting is even more atrocious than usual today. Okay, so that's your differential element, and it's sorted that this thing here is t. And what about 1 plus x? So... If this is x, then this implies that 1 plus x is going to be equal to 1 plus t uh, plus 1 minus t divided by 1 plus t. And again, the t's cancel out quite nicely, so you're left with 2 divided by 1 plus t. And the reciprocal of uh, 1 plus x will, of course, be equal to 1 plus t divided by 2. So yeah, that's a nice transformation. And as far as the limits of integration are concerned, as x approaches 0, we see that t approaches 1 minus 0 divided by 1 plus 0, which is 1. Similarly, as x approaches 1, t will approach 0. So the limits of integration here are switched up from 1 to 0 to 0 to 1. So with everything in front of us, this implies that your integral i in the t world is now the integral from 1 to 0 of uh, 1 by 1 plus x was 1 plus t divided by 2, right? And uh, you have the differential element here, so that's a negative 2 dt divided by 1 plus t squared. And the reciprocal of this here, uh, the reciprocal of the cube root of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x, is of course 1 by t to the uh, 
one third and let me just give myself some writing space so yeah poor choice for writing space on my part right now but anyway uh, I hope everything's clear so this is one by T to the one third so I've zoomed back in to stop giving myself such a hard time and I have some nice cancellations taking place. The twos cancel out quite nicely, the one plus t, one of them cancels out here and you're left with now you have this negative sign but you're integrating from one to zero. So if you switch up the limits of integration you introduce another negative sign that cancels out the first one. So you have the integral from zero to one of t to the negative one third divided by one plus t dt which is a much nicer structure than what we started off with and recently I made a proof video on a new tool it's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the s minus 1 divided by 1 plus x dx being equal to the digamma function evaluated at s minus the digamma function at s by 2 minus log 2 proof in the description below so in this case, of course, uh, we're in the t world, which doesn't really matter because, you know, it's a dummy variable, but it looks nice when you have uh, integrals in the same world written side by side for comparison purposes. Anyway, that's just something that looks nicer. The important thing here is that on comparing the uh, exponents, we see that s minus 1 equals negative 1 by 3. So this implies that s equals 2 thirds. So that means our integral i actually just equals the digamma function evaluated at 2 by 3 minus the digamma function evaluated at 1 by 3 minus log 2. And once again, we can make use of the properties of the digamma function. There's this really nice corresponding reflection formula for the digamma function where psi 1 minus z minus psi z equals pi times the cotangent of pi times z. Now in this case, if you let z equal 1 by 3, then you get psi 1 minus 1 by 3, which is of course 2 thirds. So digamma 2 thirds minus digamma 1 third equals pi times the cotangent of pi times z, which is 1 by 3. So you have uh, the cotangent of pi by 3, which if my memory served me right, is the reciprocal of the square root of 3. So all of this implies that your integral i equals pi divided by the square root of 3 minus log 2, which is a pretty nice result and a pretty smooth solution development for such a menacing looking integral. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.